Marla Gibbs first and foremost, because she was the reason that I was able to move on and do different things. There's Denzel Washington, Danny Glover, Julia Roberts, ooh, Lawrence Fishburne, Bill Duke, uh, Robin Givens, Vivica Fox. Uh, Janet Jackson. I did work with Janet Jackson on For Color Girls. I certainly did. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's Kimberly Elise, Michael Ely, Viola Davis. I did American Gangster. Well, it, actually, it came about, I got a call from uh, Sarah Green, wanting to, one of the producers, wanting to know my availability. And uh, so we're talking, and I'm figuring, I said, well, what is, what is the project that, you, that you're doing? And this was done in Richmond, Virginia. And she said, well, it's uh, the story of Richard and Mildred Loving. I said, you're talking about the Lovings in 1957? I said, yeah. And so we went on and went. I said, oh yeah, I'll do, I want to do this. Ruth was truly the matriarch of that, pulling it together, you know, and she loved the kids, she loved me, she loved everybody, you know, she just gave her heart. She and I just clicked, and Joel Edgerton, he's just an inc incredible human being. I had to take his hair from dark to blonde because wow. Richard Loving was blonde, you know. And uh, so it was, it was a labor of love, and I had time to really get it together. And Ruth, she had studied Mildred, to, to, I mean, she knew Mildred. She, knew, she spoke like Mildred. She, she was Mildred loving, you know. And so we discussed hair, hairstyles, and we had a great point of reference with the documentary that they had done on the lovings. And then Joel, uh, the director, he was like so beautiful to work with. He had so much history. He had so I called it the Bible that he had pulled together on on these characters, and to stay true. And the wardrobe was amazing. Makeup was amazing. the whole crew. They we band together and we would talk about this, that, the other. And it wasn't like no egos, no nothing. This was a truly a loving project. Oh, that was in 1982, I can't really remember, but the Watts Riots in 1965 were the trigger for me to be able to pursue what I wanted to do, which was here. Because I had worked in Watts all my life in Allen's Men's Store as a salesman and tailor. And uh, helping my mom, because she was a domestic, and I decided, you know, I was, hey, I got to, I got to help her because she's put my brother and I through a lot. So I stayed on until the Watts Riots. I'm walking down the hundred down Compton Avenue, going to work as I normally do, and seeing all these overturned police cars and all this smoke and all these fires going on. And as horrible as it was, it was one of the better things that has ever happened to me. Ironically, it cost me twenty-five dollars a week to go to school at that time. So I went through. It was, I had a heavy time at that time. I was, uh, I went through school to a certain point when my unemployment cut off, then it was like, oh, what do I do now? So what he, I told him, I said, Mr. Bobby, I'm gonna have to leave school because my unemployment is stopping. He says, no, you're gonna stay here. I'm gonna make you a work student. So in the interim, that came about, I would stay after school every day, clean up the hair and clean up the school, make quads for, uh, be able to sanitize the brushes and combs, and that's how I got through school. As time went on, a friend of mine called me who worked on the Jeffersons, and he says, Kim, would you do me a favor? Uh, Marla's, Marla's hairdresser had passed away, and she, she, but anyway, she needed to go out and she needed her hair done. Would you go to her house and do her hair? So I went to her house and did her hair, and she was just the loveliest lady, and she paid me and I left and she went on about her business and a week later I get a call from her people, Marla would like to know what you'd like to do the show 227. That's how that came about. You know? wow. And so I did that and then uh, uh, Charles Burnett, who is a director and writer, uh, he did a film called To Sleep With Anger and they needed a hairdresser and I was finishing up with 227 
So I got called to do that. That was my first actual film. I was working with Mary Alice, Danny, Danny Glover, uh, Carl Lumley. From uh, after I finished that, Bill Duke was doing Rage in Harlem, and it just it just started to escalate. People got to know who I was. I had suffered the indignity of being, you know, that guy when I first got into the union and, you know, doing what I was told and treated the way they did, which was not bad. They were just not used to, you know, too many chocolate chips being there. So it was uh, the evolution and the movement. It was a movement that I was on, you know, and it was such a great movement. Because I'm who I am and I get along with, I love people, so you can't. You can't get away with not liking me because I'm gonna like you anyway, you know. And uh, but there were those haters and and those people that you know. But I realized I had two options: to learn what they knew, or to get angry and and lose this this piece of education that was coming to me. So I chose to learn. You know, you suffer it. You just tuck your tummy in and you tuck your tongue because I got a tongue that'll come at you too, you know. Well, he's very, very into every aspect of uh, film, uh, his filmmaking. So, yeah, we, we would talk about, you know, especially with Devil in a Blue Dress, that was such a precise period. And we wanted, I, you know, I remember my father, how he combed his hair and what he did. And what we came up with this look for him with a part and his hair kind of slicked because he wore a hat and little things and the mustache was was really yeah. the key that yeah. mustache was, i saw that sharp mustache oh yeah that, able to do that i hired a barber an old barber that used the straight razor that's how that was achieved you know and it was such a great grand time in my life just watching him come alive he's just one of the greatest people in the world that man you know he was always good. He did a, a film called uh, Courage Under Fire. And uh, I was, uh, I'm not a barber, but I wasn't trained in barbering. I'm, I'm a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. So he, he came to me and says, Ken, I'm going to hire uh, this guy, Larry Cherry. I said, oh, wow, he's really good, you know, to do my barbering because it was an army film and he wanted to fade and all that kind of stuff. He said, but you work all the time anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, I said, don't patronize me, my feelings are hurt, but I understand, you know. So he says, but whenever I direct, you will head my department. So when he did Antoine Fisher, mm -hmm. The Great Debaters, true to his word, he kept it. I work within the constraints of doing a film, and so I'm dealing with a director, I'm dealing with an actor or an actress, then they have insight on how they feel like, because they have the backstory on this character. So you have to listen to a lot of voices, and then you have to interject your perception of, of what's going on. You know? So it's, it's, it's really a, a multifaceted group that you deal with, me included, the actor, the producer, I mean, not so much the producers, but the director, and the, it's, it's you gotta collaborate. It's a collaborative moment. Each, each actor, each actress, I learned something new from. Black, white, green, I've worked, especially this film, Loving, has afforded me just the primitive crop of, of very incredible actors. You know, Alan, Alano Miller, uh, what's his name, Alano, but he's in Loving, he's up for an award for supporting. He was just a joy to be around every day, you know? And then being there, I had to, uh, I didn't have anyone, I had to find someone to work with. And that turned out well. So it's, it's I don't know, it's, we're all connected. Well, the, the first thing I would say is pay attention to old school, you know, because a lot of times they come in and they, oh, that ain't how we do it now, this is how we do it now. But this, you, you, what are you going to do when you do a period piece? What are you going to do when you do something back in, you know, because I'm there for you to teach me what you know now. I want to learn what you want, what you know. But if you don't get it from me, get it from one of the old school people, and sisters, brothers, or the white folk, anybody that can give you the talent to be able to run a show and do what you need to do. Listen 
and not only be a good listener, but hear what people are saying to you. Most time people are really listening, but they ain't hearing nothing, you know. There's a big difference in listening and hearing. And pay attention, take notes, have a pad and pen and piece of paper so that you can reference something. It's okay to, to learn from anybody that can teach you anything. And don't, when it turns into a job, you know it's not for you. And, and know what, what things do, what film does, what HD does. Know what you can do. Know, learn. Pay, go to some of those seminars that those, they have at Local 706. Pay attention to those people that really know their craft. Wake up knowing that your blessings are here another day. And you know why they're here another day? Because you woke up. And you have the option to make it what you want it to be. Be sitting around waiting and thinking that, or blaming other people for what happened or needing other people's approval. Because if that were the case, I would have long been gone, you know. I just move on because the people that like me or that have hired me have felt that I was competent enough to do what I did. You gotta go into you and know how great you are. You are unique. There's only one of you that do what you do the way you do it. There's a lot of people that do what you do, but not the way you do it. I'm a person that gets joy out of watching talent, whether it be as an actor, as a hairdresser, as a makeup artist, as a child. I've achieved and I've done really wonderful things. I've worked on great movies. I've worked on great TV shows. I've done, I've done a lot of, and I feel happy. I'm in my soul. I'm happy with what I've done and I'm so excited about meeting new people and new hairdressers and new makeup artists and that's my joy.